Hello, welcome to today's video. Thank you for clicking. Today we're going to start talking about how to define a parameter. So parameters, remember, are those values that are going to be referring to a population. So we've looked at this icon as kind of like this is our population. Remember that a number referring to the population is called a parameter. However, when you're talking about a parameter in terms of making an inference, you're never going to know what that number actually equals. So we're trying to make an inference on that measurement, but we don't know what that measurement is. So when you define a parameter, you're not going to have a number, it's going to be a sentence. So we have two parameters that we've been talking about. We talked about P, which is the population proportion, and we also talked about mu. So I'm gonna talk about how to define those two measurements. Um, so we have P, that's our population proportion, So when you actually define this in the terms of an actual measurement or a population, you'll have a population that you're interested in, and then you'll have to talk about what the proportion is you're measuring. So for example, if I talk about the proportion of uh, GBSU students who vape, I might start with P equals, and you're always gonna start with proportion, percent, or probability here. So it's proportion of, and then your population. Because this is a parameter, the name that you use or the group that you use is going to be a population. So the proportion of our whole population of GBSU students. And so here, this is my population. And then I need to talk about what the proportion is. So here my proportion is going to be calculated by those who vape. So that's going to be my proportion that I'm interested in. So this is how you would define a parameter for P. P equals, so it's proportion, percent, or probability, depending on the problem, of your population, because this is a parameter, so you want to talk about the population, not the sample. And then you state what you're trying to measure. So here it's the proportion who vape. So proportion of GBSU students who vape. That's how I would define a parameter P. So you're always gonna have first proportion, percent, or probability, then you have the population, and then you would say what it is you're measuring. So for a parameter, you always have to say that population, and you won't have a number because we're not gonna know the entire population. So then the next one that we talked about was mu. So if you remember, mu is going to be population mean. So it would have a similar feel to it. So we have mu. This is the population mean, but you need to make it specific to the data that you've collected. So population is the group we wanna make an inference on, and then the mean is the measurement that we're interested in. So let's still use um, GBSU as our population, and then let's say we're measuring the average height. So we would say mu equals, and this one, because this is a population mean, you would always start with mu equals mean. So mu equals mean, and then what is the variable that you're measuring? Well, we talked about height. So it would be mu equals mean height, and this is what we're measuring, so mean height. And it is valuable, especially when you're talking about quantitative data, to include the units. So maybe we would say mean height in inches, so this is the variable that we're measuring. And then you would say for your population, which is for GBSU students. So whenever you define a parameter, you're going to be defining it as a sentence or what you wanna make an inference on. You always have to include the population because parameters are for populations. And then you would include the variable that you're measuring. So this was an example on how to do a definition for P. So P equals proportion and then population and then what you're measuring, that proportion. Here we would have mu and you always start with mu equals mean because mu is a population mean. Then you state the variable and it's helpful and is appropriate for you to at some point in the problem include the units. So height and inches, four, and then our population was just GBSU students. So this is how you define a parameter and what you'll notice 
as we continue making inferences on a parameter that we'll end up using this parameter definition when we make our inference. So when we do a confidence interval, we'll actually put this sentence in our confidence interval interpretation. But ultimately, you need to be able to define a parameter because when you make your conclusion, you'll be using that parameter sentence. So in future videos, we'll talk about how to calculate an inference for a parameter, and then we'll end up using these parameter sentences. See you then.